Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got our uh, CL350 up here on the lift. I believe it's a 1970 CL350. Uh, kind of our vintage scrambler for vintage dirt events. Either way, uh, we got to put some new fork seals in this thing. These are the fork seals that have the external spring on them, not the internal ones, or the forks that have the external spring. They're under these rubber slinky boots here that I can't easily pull up, so you're going to have to take my word for it. But uh, yeah, they're under there. Anyways, we're gonna take the front end off of this thing and uh, I'm gonna put some new fork seals in it and I'm gonna show you how it's done. So, let's move in for a closer look. So we got a couple other projects going on at the same time, so disregard the tools. But in order to do this, you're gonna need to get the front wheel up in the air. I highly recommend a motorcycle jack. If you don't have one, I've made the little scissor jacks that come with your cars work. One time I even put an eye bolt in the ceiling and used to come along. First thing we're going to want to do is remove the speedometer cable, which this bike doesn't have one. Uh, you'll remove this little Phillips screw there, and then you can just pull that speedometer cable right on out of there. After that, we're going to loosen up our adjusters and remove the front brake cable. It's going to take a 14 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. You should be able to just break these two nuts free. You can see I actually already have this one broken free from another task. Um, either way, break these two nuts free and spin this one that would be on your right. Spin that one all the way back. That will let your levers go all the way forward. Then undo it here. You may or may not have to take out a little cotter pin, which this one's missing. But then you can push the lever forward and slide the cable straight down like that. Let's do that again where my hand's not in the way. Push this lever to your right. Slide the cable down. Unhooks like so. Unthread your jam nut all the way off of this thing. And you should be able to take your cable and slide it right out of that notch right there. Then from there you can go around and break these bottom nuts free. Don't take them off yet though. Hopefully they're all 12 millimeter. Some of them may randomly be 13. Why? Who knows? So to get this wheel off, you have to take this brake drum strut off right here. This strut is what keeps the drum from spinning around when you hit the brakes. Anyways, there's some little metal tabs bent over here, and uh, yours is going to be some variation of this. But what you have to do is bend these metal tabs out. The idea is the metal tab is like a little finger that holds the bolt in place and keeps it from backing out due to uh, use and vibration. So. Get behind this sucker with a little flathead screwdriver. Take your most precision hammer. And just kind of tap them back. Just like so. Then from there, you can take a 12 millimeter socket. Lefty loosey that sucker on out of there. This thing may be tight. Or not. Make sure you keep track of that little metal clip. It's very important when you put this all back together. From there, you should be able to loosen these nuts up here, or remove them actually. Remove that one, and remove that one. Don't lose your washers. Remove that one, that one, wiggle it a little bit, and it should drop right on out of there. And in this moment, you realize, oh crap, I gotta lift the bike up some more so I can get the axle out underneath these studs. You could probably wiggle it around here, but we're just gonna pick the bike up more. We gotta lift under it, why not? And 
from there, roll your front wheel right on out of there. Whoopsies. Now inside here, there's a bunch of nuts uh, or bolts. Take a 10 millimeter socket. You should be able to get the socket on there. And just lefty loosey those on out of there. Then down in here, there's another locking nut or locking washer bracket thingamajigger, whatever you want to call it. Bend the metal tabs back. Ow. And from there, should be able to wiggle your front fender right on out of there. Set it off to the side where you're not going to trip over it. Then from there, got two more steps to getting these forks out of here. First things first is these two caps on the top of here. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Uh, they should hold the gauges on in stock form. There we go. There's a little O-ring on there. Should replace that. Next, take these two bolts out right here. This one and this one. Those are the ones that actually clamp the fork in place. Keep in mind, when you do this, the forks might fall right out of here. Or they might stay stuck. They're old bikes. Who knows? When the forks do come out of there, this whole headlight thing, it's going to be loose. It might fall off. Uh, so be ready for it. Maybe take your headlight off ahead of time. I'm not doing that. I'm going to try to juggle it in place. Why? Because I like to make bad decisions. But anyways, loosen those two bolts up. Once those two are loose, grab your fork. See if you can't pull it out of there. We can't. All right. So, we thread that bolt back in the top of it. We're going to take our soft face hammer here. Give it a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. tap -a -roo two more. There we go. Make sure you've got good and thread engagement doing that. Otherwise, you'll strip out those last few threads. Fork slides right on out of there. Whoa, crap. Okay, fork slides right on out of there. Be ready. If that thing compresses, all that fork oil inside is coming out. Find your drain pan to put all that fork oil in. Now you might say, hey, Steve, why don't you use the drain plug on the bottom of the fork? Because that never gets all the fork oil out. The only thing it ever does is gets a few ounces out. Gives you a false sense of security that all the fork oil is out of there. And then you try and take them off and fork oil ends up in your shoes. Nobody wants that. So we're going to hold these in the vise here. Now, we're just lightly clamping this. You don't want to go too tight with it because you don't want to crush the, uh, the fork slider. Fork lower, fork slider, whatever you want to call it. All right, so there's a little metal ring on the bottom of this or like a little, I'm sorry, there's a little rubbery dust boot ring thingamajigger here. Hopefully we can get that out with a small screwdriver without damaging it. Usually you can just kind of carefully get under there, walk that sucker on out, set that in a clean location. Uh, you should be able to just turn this upside down and catch the washer. Keep in mind, there might still be fork oil in there. There's always more fork oil in there. We're going to clean, or clamp that down. Clamp that down a little tighter. Then we're going to reach down in there with a pair of snap ring pliers. 
There is a snap ring down inside there. And I should be able to just whoop, squeeze that sucker in. Grab your magnet. There's your snap ring. Now from there, you can pretty much just take your fork and do 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 kind of slide hammer the seal right on up out of there. Maybe. Oop, there, shit. There we go. And again, more fork oil. Always more fork oil. From there, you can wipe this sucker clean. And also just slide this fork seal just whoop right up off of here. Give it a second, let it finish drip drying off of there. Wipe it down. Uh, this would be the point we want to give the shaft some inspections. And uh, you want to have nice, good, smooth chrome here. So you probably can't see it, but there's a bunch of scratches on this. There's a horizontal scratch. There's a bunch of vertical scratches on this sucker. Um, that's all in the chrome. So basically what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to put these fork seals on here. Uh, and they're probably going to go out because those scratches are going to tear up the fork seals. The alternative would be either buy new fork sliders or send these out, have them sanded down and re-chromed and put back together. I'm not doing that on a bike I paid $400 for. So what we're going to do is we're going to wipe this thing out and we're just going to put another seal in there because seals are cheap. And I don't really put that many miles on this bike. When I do, it's off-road, so it's just getting beat up anyways. So who cares? So again, tighten that up right there. Whoop. We don't need that. Oh, wait, no. There's that little alignment bushing. Slide that down inside there. Take your new fork seal that the Honda dealer actually had in stock. Which is surprising because I ordered the wrong ones from Common Motor. Not Common's fault, my fault. I apparently selected the wrong ear. Whoopsies. So anyways, normally get everything from Common. So, take your fork seals. Take a wee little bit of grease here. Put a little grease around the outer edge of this thing. Or used fork oil, whatever you got. You just want a little bit of lube on there. That way it slides down in there. Now keep in mind, this lip seal here, where you can see that spring and everything, that goes in first. You want to be careful you don't nick that. One little nick, and the whole seal is going to blow out in a few hundred miles. Slide it down in there. Slide it down in place like so. Then, here's what I usually do. Take your washer, that actually goes on top of the snap ring, but take that, drop it down in there. Let's take a small screwdriver, push down on the washer. Go all, keep going all the way around it. Just a little push here, a little push there, and you should be able to pop that fork seal right down on there. You don't want to push right on the seal with the screwdriver because you'll tear up the seal. And you shouldn't ever have to like use a hammer on it, or if you do, just the ever lightest little tips, taps there. Once it's on there, whoop, pick that ring back up out of there. Should be able to look down in there and hopefully your seal is down in far enough. By the way, you can also use a piece of uh, inch and a half PVC, sintering PVC, slide that down in there, use it as a driver. Probably could have got away with inch and a quarter. I don't know, I didn't measure it. You use a piece of PVC. Use your tape measure. Figure out which one works best for your bike. Find your snap ring. Take your snap ring. Make sure it's clean. Now down inside there is a tiny little groove. Probably can't see it, but I swear to God it's down in there. Anyways, you should have drove your seal down in just enough where you can see that little groove. Then we're going to put the snap ring down in there just on top of that.
All right, once the snap ring is down in there, you want to make sure it's snapped back into that groove. Um, I just just push down on it with a little flathead screwdriver if it's not in there all the way. And usually once it hits that groove, you'll see it like, ding, pop right back out in there. And just kind of give a little push going around, make sure it's down in there. Of course, make sure you're pushing on the snap ring and not the seal or you will destroy the seal. So, that sucker's now down in there. From there, you can take your washer. Next, drop your dust seal down on there. Push your dust seal in place. Now, your fork is ready to install. Don't put the fork oil on it yet, because you're probably gonna move the fork up and down and you'll end up shooting fork oil out yourself. I promise that's not the way to do it. Anyways, take this sucker back over to your motorcycle lift. Next step, make sure your boot and your spring and all that jazz is nice and clean. Take it off, put it on the right way. There we go. Now, here's the trick. Technically, you need a spring compressor to do this, to reinstall this sucker properly. So we're gonna take a big zip tie. Put it on there. Don't put it on there super tight yet. Put it on there, slide your fork up. Slide the zip tie down. Wipe your sweat off. Pull the zip tie tight. Compress the fork spring down while sliding the fork tube up. Push your zip tie down. Helps if you have a third or a second person or a third hand for this. Once you feel like you got it compressed down a little bit, pull the zip tie tighter. Now, take that cap, drop it in there. Seems pointless, but we want to have that ready for when we get the fork all the way up in there. Because what we're going to have to do is we'll be able to get it in so far that hopefully the threads will pick up on that cap and we'll be able to tighten the cap up and pull the fork the rest of the way up in there. So, slide this sucker up in there. Try not to push on the lower any more than you have to because that zip tie doesn't have a whole lot of grip. don't have quite enough up there yet so hey you know what I just figured out a workaround find your bolt for the lower clamp I don't know why I didn't think of this before tighten up that lower clamp fork doesn't have to be all the way in matter of fact it'll work better if it's not just snug it up there's your third hand. Compress your fork, springs down, take your fingertips, pull that zip tie down. Way down as far as it'll go. Pull the zip tie tighter. Hopefully it'll kind of jam in place there, which is what you're after. Loosen this bolt back up. Trying to grab your fork and wiggle it right on up in there. Up far enough that the little cap pops up in the air. And you can start threading that down on there. And take your 19 millimeter wrench, start tightening this up. Light touch. It's only on there by a few threads. So if it seems to bind or get a little weird, stop. Figure out what's wrong. Once it's in there by a few threads, you feel like it's got a nice grip to it. You can take a knife or razor blade or something, reach in here and cut your zip tie. And of course, you didn't give yourself a whole lot of room to work with this thing, so have patience. There we go. Make sure this is still loose. It is. Tighten this top cap up. And it's gonna go a little ways before it gets tight. Once 
once it gets stops, don't bother torquing down because you're going to take it back off before we're done. All right, she up in there all the way. Snug that cap, snug that bolt up. Take the top cap back off. According to what I just read, this takes 6.4 ounces. So I have that in a measuring cup and I'm going to very, very carefully pour that down into the fork tube. Not to spill any, because we want to make sure we put the same amount of oil in both forks. I'm using 20 weight. I don't know what it's supposed to take from the factory, but I'm trying to slow the fork action down because I like the carbs. I got a little extra weight going on there. So, I put my 6.4 put 6 ounces of 20 weight fork oil in there. Then, from there, put your cap back on. This will be the final time. Make sure your O-ring is new or in really good shape. Find your 19 millimeter that you just had in your hand. All right, there's an order of operations to that. Run that down. Loosen this bolt up. You're doing that because you want to torque that top bolt, and if the fork needs to go up at all, you want to make sure it does that and it doesn't get bound up in this clamp. So, take your 19 millimeter, torque this to spec. Right about there. Then from there, take a 12 millimeter socket. Tighten up this bolt here. Torque that spec. Repeat the process for the other fork. Okay, from there, you may or may not be able to take your little rubber slinky and slide it down over top of your fork. Sometimes a small screwdriver helps to get this thing started. Uh, this sometimes has to wait until you have the weight of the bike back on the forks to get the rubber slinky to go down far enough. Usually as long as you get started, once the, oh, there, it's on there. But uh, if you can't get it on there, once the suspension's compressed, it's a little easier to get it down on there. So, next step, drink more water. Then, find your front fender. And hopefully you kept all your bolts uh, labeled and ordered correctly so you can reinstall them. Make sure you put the little metal locking tab underneath that back bolt, that one that's larger. Once you get that back bolt tight, you want to get a flathead screwdriver behind it and bend at least one of those tabs over. That'll keep that bolt from backing out. And keep your front brake working as it should. Don't skip this.
front wheel installation. Roll your front wheel up into place. Make sure your drum brake is pointing in the right direction before you put it in there. And from there, make sure everything's locked in, tightened up as it should be, all that jazz. Have your bottom clamp ready and simply lift your wheel up into place and then start a nut on there to hold it in. We're gonna have to come back and put a lock washer on that, but only have two hands. So, now we can put the cap on the other side with the lock washers. Torque those to spec. Go to the other side, torque those to spec. sweat. From there, you can line up your brake strut with your brake drum, just like that. Take your bolt with your specialty washer lock thingamajigger on there. Thread that all the way in and tighten it up. And from there, take your flint head screwdriver, give it a little tap, tap, tap. Next, you can hook up your front brake cable. Slide the cable through that little groove there. You could start the nut on here. Now it's probably easier than later. And then slide this little lug back up through that little U piece there. And once it's in there, put your little cotter pin back here through those two tiny little holes and that'll help keep your front brake cable from falling out. Take your cotter pin, slide it through both of those little holes there, bend it down and around. It should keep your front brake cable from popping out. Then from there, make sure your adjuster up on the handlebars is cranked pretty much all the way in. You can pull this crank this adjuster in quite a ways there actually. Once it's close, from here it's all about feel. Pull your front lever, see where it's at. Tighten up a little bit more. And you're just going to have to keep doing this process until you find that magic spot where you got good front brakes, you still have some extra travel left in the lever, you know. Then you can take your 14 and your 12 and you can lock this sucker down. From there, you can hook up your speedometer cable if you got one. And that's it. You're ready to go ride. That's all I got.